home building and remodeling show. Let's go. Welcome everybody to the home building and remodeling show. My name is Chris Kirby and I'll be your host. I am the owner of three construction companies on the Alabama Gulf Coast. The show is about residential construction. We're going to cover topics of home building and remodeling. Are you thinking of doing a remodel or building a home? Are you a contractor looking to improve your knowledge base or grow your business? Have you ever done a remodel project or built a home? There were so many things you wish you knew or that you could have done differently during the process. Then this show is for you. We break down the process of building and remodeling and how to have the best results during your project. Whether you're a DIYer looking for tips, someone looking to hire a contractor to do a project, or a contractor looking to expand your knowledge base or your business. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you. Stay tuned. We kick off the show with my thoughts on home building and remodeling. I'll share best practices and talk about some of our experiences in business and out in the field. These shared thoughts and lessons learned are meant to help you on your very own journey. Let's go. All right. So today we're going to talk about your team. And, you know, as a as a home builder, we get into these scenarios where there's a lot of fires going on around us that we have to put out. And when you're running a company, especially a business, whether it's in contracting or any in any other industry that you're in, you're constantly going to have decisions to make thousands of decisions daily that you have to make. But specifically for contractors, a lot of those decisions affect the the client and affect the consumer. And those decisions also affect the people that work for you. And so you have to remain focused and calm. And, you know, we had some scenarios this week where we were getting ready to break ground on a home build. We have done tons and tons of legwork. We have a pre-construction checklist that we use. And when you're building a home, you go through the, a series of pre-construction items that you have to take care of before you can break ground. So for the client, it's helping them navigate all of the pre-construction steps. Ours is 35 items. And we go through that pre-construction checklist and we should essentially, the last item is permitting. And once the building department issues that permit, you're ready to break ground. Well, a couple of things came up. So this build was was unique and we had to uh, make sure that uh, we were using the right type of sand on this build. Well, what happened is our client calls and, and says, hey, listen, and, and listen, we're literally getting ready to break ground on this, but he calls and he says, listen, I want to build, I want to move the house from where we originally talked about, I want to move it back four feet. And um, it's something that me and Pete have talked about before. It's one of those scenarios where it's it's not just a simple fix. It's, you know, you've got to get the survey company to buy it off on it. You've got to get the municipality or town, city, wherever to buy it off on it. And it could take a couple of days just to make that decision that the client thinks is simple. Well, you've got your site person, guy or girl lined up to do the work. And now you're delaying them. What do they do? They're going to go find work somewhere else or, you know, they're going to move to another job and they're going to finish that job and then come back. And your draw is delayed. And as the business owner, you're always looking at where your money in and money out, um, where your money is coming from. And, most of the pressure for the business owner is that money coming in in a certain amount of time so you can make payroll. And for us, when we have a lot of employees, our payroll is higher. And as you grow your business, you know, you go from a one or, or two person outfit to three and four the the scope of work that you could take on increases. However, so does the burden of payroll. And as I tell all the all of the people who come to talk to me about starting a business, and and I have three businesses, and so they're like, Chris, how do you do it? And and 
they want to talk about advice and, and different things like that. And um, I always let them know I'm, I'm fully transparent. We, we make it look good and we operate a good company, but it is so hard every day to navigate and to worry. Um, we're you, you take that when you were making a couple hundred dollars, you know, in your business and then you really stepped it up and hired somebody and now you're making a few hundred and and that was working and. You've got more and more people wanting to use you and you're like, well, I've got to hire more people. So it's just this circle of you need you need a team around you to grow. And uh, all it does is amplify problems that if you don't fix when you're making two hundred dollars, you're not going to fix when you make two thousand. You're not going to fix when you make 20 more money doesn't solve the problem. And now we move into shop talk. It's the portion of the show where I bring in a co-host and we cover trending topics in home building and remodeling. Hope you enjoy. Let's go. But what happens is, again, it delays break ground, right? Because planning and zoning says, listen, um, that shed is not authorized. It's not permitted. And then, as a matter of fact, (laughs) it's in the setback. Correct. So it has to be moved. And they're like, we'll work with you, right? But the RV... Listen, they've got an ordinance about the RVs. And guess what? Before you can break ground, the RV has to be moved. And these are just little nuances that continue to delay pre-construction and delay the build. However, what we do is we take these as lessons learned and then we facilitate. So our next, the next time we build in Gulf Shores, right, we're aware of this generally. So... Even though you think you're outside of the city limits, like city proper, and you own the land, you there's still requirements. And, and especially when it becomes an issue is when you go to do um, a build or you go to do something like what we're doing and uh, they're doing all their checks and balances yep. and all of a sudden you got to fix something and, you know. Same thing in in remodeling side where, you know, you might have done some work on your own that was unpermitted and then you want to add a structure. And, you know, when the building inspector comes out and he's inspecting ours because we pulled our permits and he's looking and like, <laughs> where where did this other work come from? So yeah. so that's kind of how that, that stuff works. If you're never going to do an addition or never build on your land, it is it is what it is. But. Yeah. Um, but again, it just goes back to, to knowing, not knowing, and kind of the due diligence part of, you know, we, we respond quickly and we're able to pivot. But, man, we've, we've had 10 hurdles just to get to a point where we can break ground. Right. And so you have to be leery and you have to be kind of the, the person that's ready to go. I can start quick. Um, you you got to understand there's so many requirements before you can literally start work that 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 might not be the best option because you're thinking, well, time is money and and I want to get this thing started, right? Uh, and you're like, okay, fine. He can he or she can do it sooner, so I want to sign that contract. Correct. It's not just about whether they can do it sooner. It's can they get the pre-construction done to be able to even start the build, yep. you know? And what throws a, a kink into that, too, is even within the county. Yeah is different ordinances depending on where you build in that. Yeah. So you could theoretically be 30 yards on a house build from what you think is an ordinance. Right. And it's totally different in where you're at. Yeah. So yep. it's it's def- definitely pays to, to research what has to be done and what can't be done or can be done Yeah. on that particular piece of property. And, yep. And again, like we talked earlier, it's if you were missing your GPS coordinates by 10 feet, this created an issue with this homeowner where he had to actually pull a permit for that portable building. Yeah. Which everywhere else in the county doesn't require it, but he's in Gulf Shores and any uh, uh, side or self standing building has to have a permit. So yeah. any shed, any uh, uh, anything you buy, say you buy a temporary little composite building from Lowe's or Home Depot. Technically with Go Shores you have to have a permit wow. for that building. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Um, and you know, and, and again, there there's just reasons that they do everything that they do and usually they enforce these codes and, and and it is for a reason. It's not just to be a nuisance, but 
you know, we're, we're down on the water and we do have hurricane season here and I'm sure that stuff can go flying around that's if it ain't done. That's all linked to that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Now we've got another hurdle. Let's, let's talk about this one. Today is a day of hurdles around here at uh, Kirby Homes and we want to fully embrace those hurdles, huh, Pete? Um, let's talk about what's going on with so we build barn dominiums, and barn dominiums um, are are very different from a traditional home. Some of the processes and, and differences um, make them unique to build. And uh, so, as we were on our fourth one, and we're still navigating hurdles with the newness of of barn dos and getting the build outs right. And uh, so, one one thing we're kind of going back and forth on um, is is the framing portion of this, right? So when you build a barn dominium, the the style we do, we don't do the pole barn type uh, barn dominiums. Um, not that we, we can't. It's just right now we won't because it, where we are, these, these wind rated buildings work better. So anyway, um, so we set a metal building, you know, you've got uh, steel beams and, and stuff like that. The, the way we do the, the footers and, and stuff is a little bit different compared to how we do it on a traditional home. And, uh, you know, we're, we, we build out the, so once it's done, we get the foundation, we set the metal building, we build out the interiors. Well, on this specific, uh, barn dominium, there is a second story. It's got high ceiling, 20 foot, 20 foot high ceilings. It's, uh, it's, it's very nice and open. However, that second story adds a different dynamic and dimension. It's not attic space. So you have to, you know, have, what are we using? I joist? We're using I joist. Okay. So we're going to use I joist. And, you know, just in communication with our framer, the framer wanted to go a different direction with it. And, and we listened to that recommendation and we ordered some, some lumber and we were going to roll with it. Right. Correct. What, what was that recommendation? So just to back up, when we do a barn dominium, um, in this particular instance, the we contracted with a metal building supplier. Yeah, and who, if you picture, we're literally it's almost like we're doing two builds. Yeah, he's doing the metal building. Yeah, we're doing the house. Yeah, the build out. Yeah, so we had our house engineered. Yeah, for what we're going to build on the inside, he had his metal building engineered with slab. And the, and the foundation, and the foundation portion foundation. And engineered Correct. separately, specifically. Okay. So when you're doing a conventional build, any load-bearing wall will have a grade, grade, grade beam. beam. Yep. So, which is a, you're basically digging down to add more concrete to support that yep. load-bearing So it's similar to a footer, but it, it the grade beams are done after the dirt work is put in. Correct. Okay. So and so on this one, since he was having his metal building engineered yeah none of the floor plan was linked to our build out so the engineer went with a conventional four inch slab throughout this build yep. so when we're coming in to build the infrastructure and we're dealing with multiple floors yep. we're having load bearing walls so we have to literally tie because of the four inch slab yep. is not sufficient to support load bearing walls yeah we had to come in with 32 foot eye joists to span the width of the building. Yeah. For that second floor. And listen, anybody who's in the home building industry or any framer knows, right? That 30, 32 foot eye joists aren't just, you, you're not going to just you're pick them up. Buy are the you? Home Depot and Lowe's. <laughs> you, you can't just go pick that up. Correct. So, lo and behold, luckily, our local lumber company uh, is very, very. Uh, gracious and quick to respond when we get into a jam okay like this um we ended up ordering those and that's going to take about how long we ordered them yesterday they'll be here on friday so so listen so a project where the framing portion is relatively simple for the framer right you're not you're not doing sheathing and and a lot of different things that you would do in a traditional home uh you're doing an interior build out uh it now turns into, and and these guys are are great. Our framers right. are good. They're quick. Uh, sometimes we can't keep up with them because they're moving so quick as far as materials. But uh, right. anyway, so uh, a build, a, a framing portion of the build, that face. What do you what do you think that would have taken us had we had everything ready? If we had everything there, week week and a half tops. We- 
Now we're going to move into the portion of the show where we talk interior design. We're going to bring in an interior designer and we're going to talk trending design and products. Hope you enjoy. Let's go. Investment yeah. for them. Well, and, and that's the thing. Like, There's no surprises. What I've noticed in real estate and in contracting, uh, you know, it's a long-term relationship. Oh, absolutely. Right? So this client that is moving down, you're going to be their real estate agent, but Mm -hmm. they know that, that a good real estate agent is dialed in and they have people meaning, Hey, I want to buy that house, but I really don't like the the paint colors. Not Mm -hmm. a big deal. I know a painter, right? You know what I'm saying? Oh, there are some flooring issues. Not a big deal. I know a floor guy. I know a good contractor in general. So those are, you know, you know what? Do you know anybody local that does insurance? Do you know anybody local that does X, Y, Z? Oh, yeah. You are all always, as a realtor, bridging those gaps. And it's to keep the client, keep the deal. And then when the client gets here, right, they're still, they sometimes they become friends or, you know, oh, yeah. but they're still local to the community. And it turns into, hey, that, uh, you know, I'm ready to paint now, or I need furnishings, or I need whatever, right? And for you as an interior designer, you can help them out with that. Right. And then take it a step further. Hey, I want to get my bathroom redone. Oh, well, you know some people. You, yeah. know, you know what I mean? So there's a there's when you look at every transaction that you do, you should take care of that transaction in its own, knowing that in the future... Right. They're going to call you back. They're going to need something. And if you if you took care of them and they're Mm -hmm. happy with what you've done, then they're going to continue to call you. And like for us, that takes shape in the fact that we're called to go change a light bulb. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we go back out because later they're like, okay, I want a bathroom. And then they're like, well, I want a kitchen. Well, then I want a house. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. And it, it, it is. They're going to call you every time because they trust you. They know you're going to put in the work. And it does become a, a relationship. And not only that, but now they're here. They're established. And who do you think they're going to turn to when they start meeting people and, and they get in these conversations about, oh, your bathroom looks good. Who did you use? Right. So it's a it's a it's a long term referral source as well to do good business. And, you know, we can, we can segue from that into, you know, you're talking about an influx of people moving here. Mm -hmm. Well, that has been a, a, a challenge, but also a blessing for us. We just started our Kirby interior design, the interior design side in January. Mm -hmm. And I would say, um, It's a little more, it's a, we're not the average area. We're in a little bit of a bubble down here because there is an influx. People are continuing to move. We're on the Gulf Coast. Uh, For those, those of you who don't know, we're on the Alabama Gulf Coast and specifically our area, our county is just growing leaps and bounds. So I want to talk about, because you've seen it firsthand uh, since we've, we, you started out part-time and then we could afford to bring you on Mm full-time on the interior design side. Um, Some of the unique challenges that the growth presents to us is we're actually, we do have an influx of business as well Mm -hmm. because people are coming and they will buy production homes and they know they're just basically getting that, that square box, but they know they can remodel it. Mm -hmm. They know they can redesign it. Mm -hmm. And so they're calling you later for the interior design and they want to know, uh, you know, if you'll come out and take a look. And, you know, so we've had a lot of that business. And like you said earlier, the kitchen and bath side, that's our niche. Mm-hmm. So we do get a lot of kitchen and bath work. So how has um, what are some of the challenges that you've seen? Because we always talk about people and, and process. Right. right? Mm-hmm. So for us. Some of the things in growing a new interior design business, um, we're working on like pricing, different price points, packages, mm-hmm. um, scheduling, right? Because mm-hmm. now we have four interior designers and we're trying to get them to focus on 
um, different areas because we build custom homes. So Mm -hmm. we've, we've just made it where we've got a, an interior designer that is assigned to oversee custom homes. And then we've got an interior designer that's uh, assigned to oversee kitchen and bath. Mm -hmm. We've got an interior designer to oversee what's called soft surfaces, which is like furniture, decor, window treatments and stuff like that. Um, And then you are um, really brought in to work on the business management side. Mm -hmm. When you start a company um, you really start it because you're passionate and you're like, hey, I'm pretty good at something mm-hmm. and I can turn this into a business. Right. But I know for a contractor that turns into, well, I'm a good tile installer. Mm-hmm. I'm going to line up work. I'm going to hire a helper and I'm going to start my company. But they're not very, very good at minding the business. Right. right? And that's mm-hmm. what I call it. And I brought you in for that. Um, and we've had a lot of growth. We've got a lot of opportunity, but what would you say it's like coming into, um, starting a business because you do have a background in business. So you, you've already ran your own business. Mm -hmm. Um, but just some of the, some of the challenges, and then we'll talk about some of the opportunities that we have. The opportunity is growth. Absolutely. But the challenge it's also growth, right? Mm-hmm. It's kind of a, you know, we have to have people to help do the design work, but it's it's figuring out what seat to put them in and how we can make the most benefit. Mm-hmm. So uh, if, if if somebody who's aspiring to be an interior designer, but also want to have their own business, um, you know, what kind of what kind of challenges have we seen that may be a benefit to talk about here on the show? I mean, I think, you know, any, anyone can say, oh, you know, I would love to be an interior designer, sure. and, you know, make it, paint it pretty, all these different things. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of moving parts to it. Absolutely. There's, you know, you don't want to keep t- spinning your wheels. Like, you know, we're trying to work out the kinks and um, timing is a big thing because, you know, we don't want to spend too much time on something to where it's pretty much just comes a wash. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's got to make sense and there's got to be profit and there's got to be key areas that we know that we're good at. Sure. And then kind of dial in on that. So it goes back to, to, it goes back to like on the contracting side, I've done a whole segment before on the show, a few shows about this. Um, but it's finding your niche, right? right? So like as an interior designer, right, there are kitchen and bath designers, there mm-hmm. are custom interior designers who just want to work on custom homes. So it's kind of the same, same thing, right? Because if not, you're doing a little bit of everything Mm -hmm. and, and you're putting in hours on a little bit of everything and it really doesn't add up to paying the bills or making good money. Right. And we're, we're seeing that, uh, we've got talent, we've got work and we're just, we're starting to put those puzzle pieces together. So as we continue to do the show, uh, we've added the interior design segment specifically because it's a big market. It's a growing market. Um, our our other two companies, we we weren't visionaries. We weren't mm-hmm. good at putting the putting the pieces together, and we had a need for interior design to help with selections and stuff. So as we move forward in the show, we're going to continue to talk about some of the the growth that we have in our company, some of the issues that that we have, some of the challenges we're facing because. Our entire mission mission on the home building and remodeling show is to help help people in mm-hmm. our industry, right? Mm-hmm. Become small business owners, take that leap and, and open their business. And what I want to always be mindful of is it's it it can be um, very daunting, but if if we can do anything here to ease that burden or make suggestions, because we're, we're over here every day learning lessons, especially on interior design, because that's not my background, mm-hmm. right? And so we've got a strong team, um, but each team, um, each individual on the team is unique, mm-hmm. and uh, they have their strengths, they have their weaknesses, and we're trying to put all of that together. So I want to make sure as a part of our mission moving forward, we openly talk about what's going on in Kirby Interior Design and so some of these same conversations are going to be super beneficial to the people watching the show and who need advice and mm-hmm. lessons learned is the, the, the big factor, right? Yeah. Um, move-
Thanks for joining us today. As always, we are grateful for our listeners and your continued support. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on social media via Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Get more info at our website, www.thehomebuildingshow.com. And as always, remember who we are, the Home Building and Remodeling Show.